I'm troubleshooting this circuit here, which actually controls the direction of this uh, 10 amp motor. Now, troubleshooting is a very important skill that you need to learn to develop. This 10 amp motor here uh, produces large voltage transients, and though it's a little bit hard for you to see, but what we have are some diodes here that are actually used to protect these integrated circuits from those transients. As we go through this material on diodes, I want you to be thinking about applications. Now, diodes are two terminal devices that are used in many electronic systems. They're used to provide DC voltages for such devices as TVs, stereos, and computers. They're used for circuit protection, which is what I was talking about earlier. They're used in communication circuits. Now, special kinds of diodes, called LEDs, these are light-emitting diodes, are used in many electronic displays and also in many electronic toys. So look, let us go ahead and begin our study. What we're going to start off with is really a discussion of the uh, ideal diode. All right. Let's draw a symbol first of all for this diode. The symbol looks like this. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show the defined voltage direction and current direction associated with this diode. So plus minus we have the voltage VD, that is the voltage across the diode, and the current through the diode is defined as like so, ID in this direction. Okay. Now basically what is a diode? A diode is a bit like a valve. Okay. It allows current to flow in one direction, that is in this direction, but does not allow current to flow in the other direction. Now one way to think about that is look at the symbol. It's like an arrow, isn't it? And the arrow defines that, look, it will conduct this way. And if you look at this bar thing here, well, that's kind of blocking the current, okay? So it's one way to look at it. But basically a diode then conducts one way, but does not conduct the other way. That is the case of an ideal diode. Now let's go on a little bit further and we'll look at actually, or comment about what the diode or most diodes today and the diodes that you will be dealing with are constructed from. The diodes that you will be looking at and dealing with are actually semiconductor diodes. Semiconductor diodes. Okay, now di the diode then is basically a p-n junction. Now in your physics class you'll be discussing semiconductor materials and you'll be looking at p-type material and n-type material. Now we, we don't have uh, a big concern over this. Our applications are really circuit applications rather than looking at the device physics that's really going on. But let's look at this for a moment, okay? Let's look at the case basically where the diode is forward biased, where the diode will be conducting. All right, now we're going to put some resistance in series with the diode there. This is just a current limiting resistance. And then we're going to come along and we're going to apply our voltage source like so. Okay, this is a forward biased configuration for that diode. Let's draw the uh, diode symbol version of this. So here's the symbol for the diode. Here's my current limiting resistor. And here, once again, is that voltage source, like so. Okay. Now basically here then, the diode is going to be conducting. All right, now, if we look at the characteristic of the diode, when it is conducting, when it is being operated in what we call the forward biased direction, basically the relationship between the voltage across that diode, that is VD, 
and the current through the diode ID is an exponential relationship. And so if we roughly drew a graph over here and we said we had the current ID and we have the voltage VD across the diode, then what we're effectively seeing is an exponential curve like so. Okay, let's now look at what happens then when we reverse bias the diode, when the diode effectively is not conducting. All right, so once again, let me just draw this PN junction. Here it is. This is our semiconducting material, P type, N type. Let's once again put in that current limiting resistor. What I'm going to do this time is I'm simply going to reverse, if you like, the power supply. So I've got the plus on this side, like so. Okay, let's put our symbol or our circuit diagram down. Here is my diode, here is the current limiting resistor, and once again, all I'm doing here is reversing the power supply, like so. Okay, and basically, in that configuration, the diode's not conducting, all right? We still have our defined directions as plus, minus, we call that the voltage VD, and of course, our defined current direction is ID. Now, if we were to look at a graph now of this current ID versus this voltage VD, the voltage across the diode, in reality, there is a very small current that actually does flow in this reverse direction. It's a very small current. It's a nanoamp or less type current. Pretty much a constant current. And so really in this reverse direction, there is indeed a very small current that's actually flowing. Um, and so ID then is actually equal to this very small current, which is I often referred to as IS, the saturation current. And we find that in this reverse direction, then ID is equal to minus this I of S or IS current, this reverse saturation current. For most of what we're doing though, we're assuming that that current in that reverse direction is zero. Okay, now there is an equation basically that describes this characteristic curve for this PN junction diode. So let me just show you that equation and we'll make a few comments about it. All right, here it is. Now this is a very busy picture here, but basically what I want to do is just focus on that equation. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that ID is equal to IS. That's that reverse saturation current. I'm opening up a big bracket here and here. Inside of these brackets, what do I have? I have the exponential function. Okay, that exponential function is what? It's exponential of Q times the voltage across the diode divided by n k t and enclose the bracket okay so that's my exponential function and now i have this minus one look we're not going to have a big play on that equation i just want you to be aware basically that the characteristic of a diode in the forward direction is an exponential curve now even this is a model for the diode and is not strictly accurate all right Let's just run through this. ID, of course, is the diode current. IS is the reverse saturation current. VD is the voltage across the diode. Q is the electronic charge. K is Boltzmann's constant. And T is temperature measured on an absolute scale. Now, this N term here, it's kind of like a fudge factor. If N is equal to 1, that's true for a germanium diode. In the case of a silicon diode, n is actually equal to 2 for low currents, and then it becomes 1 for higher currents. So look, if I drew that equation, or rather the characteristic curve again, here is ID, and here is the voltage VD. We have this curve that looks like this, okay? What we're saying for silicon is down here at low currents, n is equal to 2, but up here in the vertical rise section for silicon, 
n is equal to 1. Now, there is, this curve is actually shown in your textbook. Uh, I believe this is on page 65 of the text, and you can have a look at that curve uh, in the book. All right, now we can simplify this equation. We can put in the value of q, k, and t at room temperature, and we can come up, if you like, with a simplified version of that equation. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm saying at room temperature, this is room temp, room temperature, ID then is really equal to IS, and I'll open up a big bracket here, Here's my exponential function. Voltage across the diode, now this voltage across the diode is then divided by n times 0.025. Okay, now remember that's putting in the value of Q, Boltzmann's constant, and assuming a temperature at room temperature. Okay, and then a minus one. All right. Now what I'd like you to really do with this, we look at this in the laboratory, and what I'd like you to really do as an exercise is maybe this. Let's say we have a value of n is equal to 1. Put in some values of VD and determine ID. Okay, and your values might be. So in the forward direction, so let's say in the forward direction, let's put in some values of VD. We could have 0. Point, let's say 0 0.05. Comma. Then the next value, determine ID for this value of VD. Then next we could have 0. Point, uh, let's say 1. And then the next value of VD could be 0. 0.15. And do a few like this and determine the ID values. And then in the reverse direction, you might put in some VDs of, let's say, a minus 1, uh, a minus 2, a minus 3, and determine the ID. Now you'll notice that when you start putting in values of VD which are negative, that is in the reverse direction, this term here becomes very small and is approximately equal to zero. And so really the ID then becomes IS times this minus one, and so ID becomes a minus IS. But it would be instructive really for you to, as I say, play with this equation a little bit, just gain a little bit of familiarity with putting some numbers in there and actually plotting uh, that equation Okay, let's take a moment now and look at the second approximation, what I'm referring to as the second approximation for the diode. And this is the one that we'll basically use most of the time. So this is the second approximation of the diode. Okay, what does that look like? All right, well, remember we had a plot of ID versus the voltage VD. Now, we know that that's really an exponential type relationship. It kind of looks, if you like, sort of like this. There's our exponential relationship, okay? Very small current in the reverse direction. All right, an approximation to that curve then would be to take a line, okay, parallel to the vertical ID axis coming down to the horizontal axis like so. Okay, and so our second approximation is just this curve then that is parallel to the ID axis coming down to the horizontal axis. And so along here, the current, of course, would be zero. All right, often we refer to this voltage right here as VT. And in the case of silicon, uh, that VT would be around about 0 0.7 volts. And in the case of germanium, that VT would be around about 0 0.3 volts. And that's, a, that's an approximation that we are going to use extensively, uh, really, for the diode circuits that we will be actually considering and looking at.